Every data project has to deal with date and timestamp data type and Snowflake has a very strong native support for these data types. When we extract data from source system which has date and timestamp be it traditional RDBMS system or any API source or an FTP location these date and timestamp text come in variety of formats and it is important to understand how they can be ingested effectively into Snowflake table using copy command and file formats. So this kind of date and timestamp text fields having different formats can be loaded uniformly without losing them including their nanosecond precision if it is a timestamp text field. So this chapter of data loading will help you to answer couple of questions like how to identify data loading strategy to handle different date and time format text. How to manage date and time data type if files are partitioned and having different date and time format in each individual partition files. Impact of warehouse performance and nanosecond position with timestamp data type. Upper and lower bound for date values in Snowflake and other limitation related to date and timestamp. So if you are not confident and fully aware about these questions and scenarios, stick until the end of this video and we will demonstrate how to handle different date and time format in Snowflake, especially while loading the data. And by the end of this video, you would be able to answer and understand the different strategies which will help you in your development activities. So stick until the end of this video. Welcome back to my channel Data Engineering Simplified and to this how to load data into Snowflake series for true data professionals like you. I am assuming that you already have SnowSQL CLI installed else you would not be able to practice all the exercise done in this video. You can download all the files and SQL script from my website refer the link below in the description section. In chapter 10, we will practice interesting things about date and timestamp text handling including timestamp nanosecond behavior, storage and load performance and many more topics listed in this tree map using Snowflake free trial edition. There are a lot of exciting features to be learned about data loading be it CSV or other file format into Snowflake. And this playlist has already covered many important and practical use cases and I hope they are helping you in your day-to-day -day data development activities. Feel free to subscribe to this channel so you would be notified when new videos are published. Before we start practicing using SnowSight Web UI, here are the tables and file format structure which we are going to use. We will load data into booking table which has just five columns to validate date, time, date time and timestamp data type behavior with CSV file loading. We will use customer table which has around 15 columns and we have been using this structure for all our previous data loading videos and will be used to load 1 million plus record to see how timestamp precision impact the performance of a virtual warehouse. The structure of standard file format to load the CSV data while running copy command and use some data and timestamp parameters to accommodate different date time format which is available in your source file. You can download all the DDLs script from my website. The link is given below. So let's start. I am in my SnowSight web UI and let's start with a table called bookings. It has total five columns to accommodate different data types like date, time, date time and timestamp. Date time and timestamps are exactly the same object. However, for demonstration purpose, I have used two different data types. Bookings table is created successfully. Now let's create a file format called csv underscore ff with a standard parameter. No additional parameter with respect to date and time is specified here. And let's see how the default file format works when we load the csv data. So csv underscore ff file format created successfully. Now let's use this NoSQL CLI to run and load the sample csv file by executing this put command. Let's go to VS code to review the file and run the put command. So this is my sample CSV file, which has only five records and you can see it has date, time, date time and timestamp. Let's run the put command and see the result. So my first sample CSV file loaded successfully to the user stage. Let's go back to snow site. Let me list the user stage. The booking standard CSV file is loaded. 
So let's run the copy command to copy the data into the booking tables. It took 3.3 seconds to load the small CSV file and all the five rows loaded. Let's review the data. So the date, booking time, booking date time and booking timestamp, everything is loaded. If you notice the sub millisecond, everything is coming as a 000, zero here. Even though I do not have any uh, sub millisecond or a nanosecond precision specified in this sample file, Snowflake has considered as dot zero 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 and displayed that result. If you look into the time, time does not have any sub second. However, Snowflake has not considered sub second for the booking time. So you need to understand the behavior, how Snowflake data type with respect to date, time and timestamp works. Now we'll try to understand the upper and lower bound when it comes to the date in the second part of this video. Let's open a new worksheet. Let's review our sample data first before we go and practice them. This is the same sample data file where the first five rows are having date as a 2022 and the row number six is taking a date which is 9999 and row number seven is taking a date called 10,000 and here on the line number 12 the year in the date field is 999. You can pause and review this last five lines. There are different year available in date and timestamp field. And when we try to load this data, we will see whether this will be loaded properly or not. The date and timestamp format is still same. It is YYYYMMDD. That format is not changed. We are just trying to validate if your data file is having a different year range, how that range will be loaded and considered by Snowflake. So let me put this file into the stage location. So the file is loaded successfully. Let's go back to our web UI. Let's list the user stage. I can see the new CSV file is available. Now I'm going to run the copy command into the same booking table and let's see how many data set we have in the booking table. And before that, I will truncate the booking table so I would be able to validate this 11 rows. No data set available. Now let's run this copy command. So this new booking CSV file is being loaded into the bookings table and I'm using the same file format which does not have any specific parameters for date and timestamp. So the file is processed but status says data loaded partially. So total 11 rows passed, only 8 of them are loaded and there are 3 errors. Let me copy the query ID and let's see what has gone wrong. And again, if you have not seen my validation video chapter 8 in this playlist, I would request you to go and watch if you do not understand how to validate data before and after loading. Let me run this validate command. It clearly says timestamp is not recognized. In Snowflake, if you have given 10,000 as an year, it would not process that data. Let's review the data in the bookings table. So line number eight, line number nine, and line number 10, these three rows are not processed. Let's see what's wrong there. So line number eight is having 10,000 as an year for a date time and timestamp. Line number nine also has 10,000 as a timestamp and line number 10 has a 10,000 as a date. However, timestamp has 9,999. If 9,999 is the upper bound for your year and you can go down to any year like 9999. Let's check the booking table. And if you pay attention to the row number 10, the year field in the date has been processed successfully. The year field 10,000 is not processed for a timestamp, okay? And this is what my observation. As per the Snowflake documentation, 1582 to 9,999 are the years which it can insert. When I executed my copy command, I could manage to insert 10,000 as an year in the date field. However, I could not manage to insert 10,000 when it is a timestamp. Probably Snowflake is not able to hold that range in the timestamp or date time. It can hold that number in your date value. So you can make sure that when you are loading your data, consider these boundaries. But what if we have a different file format? other than YYYYMMDD in our file or different files are having different file formats, then what all the parameters we can use in our file format definition 
which will help us to load the data appropriately. Let's try to understand that. In this part, I'm going to use the same booking table. However, I will alter the file format to accommodate different kind of date and timestamp format from my CSV file. So let me truncate my booking table. It is successfully done. Now I am going to load this file called booking mix date and I will show you how this file looks like. The first five rows in this file are exactly same as the previous file. The fifth row is using a different date format which is ddmmyyy. Here also it is ddmmyyy and here also for a timestamp I am also using ddmmyyy. Now I am going to load this data without changing my file format and see the booking ID number five should not be loaded. So let me run my put command. My new sample file 04.csv is loaded successfully. Good. Let's quickly check. Yes, it says it is loaded successfully. Now I'm going to use the same file format and trying to load this data. Let's see how does it look like. As expected, it is partially loaded and out of five, only four rows are loaded. And it clearly says the first error, the date 29-12-2022 is not recognized. Let me copy the query ID. Let me run the validate command. So that line number six has recognized three error, one for date and two for timestamp, okay? And it could not convert because in our file format, the default file format behavior in Snowflake is YYYYMMDD. And it says the booking date, booking date time, and booking timestamp, the second column, fourth column, and fifth column could not convert it as expected. So let's see how to fix it. Now I have created a new file format. In this file format, I am going to use the date as DDMMYYY and timestamp is that again DDMMYYY. And if you look into the time part, which is HH24MISS, and fraction is up to nine precisions. So let's create this file format. It is created successfully. I can also skip the FF. By default, the FF is up to three precisions. If I have to go for up to nine, I have to specifically mention that up to nine. Now let's describe this file format quickly. So I can see my date format has taken the new value and timestamp format also taken a new value. Let's truncate the bookings table. It is done. Now, I am running the copy command with new file format and trying to load the same data. This time, the first row should fail and the fifth row should be inserted successfully. Yeah, again as expected, out of five, only one row loaded. And again, it is saying the date is not recognized because I am using a different file format. Let me copy the query ID. Let's run the validate command. And here it is clearly saying in each row, the line number two, could not recognize the date timestamp and the same error for all other row from ID 1 to ID 5. These parameters help you to define the date format and time format as per your data file and then Snowflake will convert appropriately and load your data without any error. Now let's understand how the nanosecond precision works when we try to upload the data through a CSV file. I'm going to use the same bookings table and same file format. I'm not making any changes. And before I load the data, let's truncate our existing booking table. I do not have any data set in my bookings table. Now I'm going to run this put command and let's review this new file called bookings nano second CSV. So if you look into the file, the last column booking timestamp is having a timestamp along with nanosecond values. All the line items are having a nanosecond and this is how the data looks like. And if I go to my previous file, this was not having a nanosecond. Okay. And let's see how does it behave when we try to load the data into a snowflake. Let me load this CSV file using put command. So my data is loaded successfully into user stage. Let's go back to snow site. Let's see if data is loaded or not. I can see my data is available in the user stage. I'm going to run the same copy command, nothing is specific. It is inserting the data into the booking tables from this CSV file. 
and it says all the five rows loaded successfully without any issue. Let's see how the table looks like. So when I look into the booking timestamp, it just shows the first three numbers. It does not show all of them. So at this stage, we are not sure whether data is loaded properly or Snowflake has truncated while running the copy command. Actually, the data is loaded. So Snowflake has a session level parameter which needs to be altered and you have to specify the format. So by default, it is FF3. But if I have to see all the fraction values, I have to make it 9 and I have to set that no time zone out format equals to this value. Let me run this. Let's rerun the booking table. And now I can see in the booking timestamp, all the data set is visible properly. It means my data set has been loaded successfully and I have not lost any data set. Snowflake only gives precisions for timestamp up to nine, not beyond that. So if you have a requirement where you have to load the data in the nanosecond, Snowflake clearly support without any specific file format configuration. In this part of this video, I will try to understand the performance of a virtual warehouse and the overall loading performance when we try to load a large amount of data which has a timestamp field and the data file has a nanosecond data for the timestamp. So I'm going to create a customer table which has a total 15 field and this customer table we have been using for our all load performance. Since I'm going to load a large amount of data, I am creating a new file format and this file format is called CSV gzip ff and the date format in the file format is yyymmdd and timestamp format is also yyymmdd followed by millisecond. Let's create this file format. Let's check how our file looks like before we run the copy command. So this is my customer CSV file which has close to 500k record. I have a couple of such files and let's load them first. So this is my put command. I am taking all the gzip file, placing them into the user location. I am using total 50 parallel thread so I can speed up the overall loading. Let me fast forward. It may take a while. So I can see from 0, 01 to 0, 05, five customer files are loaded close to 20 to 22 MB each of them. And each of them are having around 500K. So it should be able to load close to 2 to 2.5 million rows when the copy command is executed. It took roughly 13.67 seconds to load 2.5 million of data set. Let's go back to snow site. So the put command executed successfully. Let's list them. So I can see all the data set is available here. Good. Now I am running this copy command, which will load the data into this customer F3 table. And it is using this gzip ff f3 and it is picking all the files. It is using a pattern and let's see how much time does it take. And if you look into the file here, there is a one timestamp field. This timestamp is having nanosecond data set. And let's see how does it work when we load the data. It took roughly 5.9 seconds. Looks good. Most of the data set is loaded without any issue. Looks good. Let's see how it looks like. So the date is loaded successfully. And even though I have specified FF3, it has loaded all the data set. Okay. Now what happens if I try to load the data using FF9? Let's try that out. And I'm going to change my warehouse before running the second scenario. Let's resume the compute warehouse. Now I am going to load the data in another table called customer F9. And I'm going to use a different file format called FF underscore F9. Let's see how does that look like. So here is my table, which is having a customer F9, exactly the same structure. It is created successfully. And now this is another file format, which ends with F9. Let's create this file format. So file format is created. So let's run this copy command, which will load the data in customer F9 using FF F9. It took 6.7 seconds, slightly higher than the previous one. And let's run this command. So if I see first 10 records, even though I have specified FF3 for customer underscore F3 table, it has considered all the fraction values. And if I go to another table customer F9, here also it has considered all the fraction values. Let's go back to our query activity. Let me apply a filter. And this is my copy table, which is inserting on customer F9 and here customer F3. 
if we look into the time this has taken 6.7 however execution time is 5.2 here also execution time is 5.1 it has taken uh, queuing for 83 millisecond and that's why there is a difference however if you look into the execution time there is no difference in execution time let's click on one of them to see storage space oh. the bytes return is 65.53 mb and let's go back to other query this is another query where it has written the data into f9 and here also it is 65.53 so if you want to really truncate and store the timestamp up to millisecond and not for a nanosecond you cannot go with this approach so think and please suggest if you have a better idea how we can truncate the nanosecond to the millisecond i would love to hear from you so it is very clear internally snowflake does not truncate fraction value for the timestamp so our first load in the booking table did not have any fractions for timestamp and let's see how does it look like I change my output format to fraction 9 in the sense nanosecond. Let's select the bookings table. File. This is the first booking file which we used to load the data. It did not have any fraction value for timestamp. However, in the snowflake result, it is actually having the fraction value. I assume it only stores the offset value. It does not store the actual value. If you have a lot of files coming from a different sources and they are lying under different partition and each of the partition may have a different date and timestamp format, what should be your strategy? I would say use different file formats and using pattern matching parameter in your copy command, data can be loaded without losing date and timestamp formats. In the same file, you have a different date and timestamp format appearing in a different row. What should be your strategy? I would say load the date, time or timestamp text values as varchar or text and run the post processing using user defined function and bring the uniformity in your curated or process layer. Or alternately, you can use the function in the copy command via transformation what we have seen in earlier chapter and load the data. However, the transformation in a copy command has many limitations. So be careful about it. We have seen the lower and upper bound for year failed in date and timestamp data types and what if your project has to accommodate such year value. Though it is an edge case or extreme situation while loading the data, what should be your strategy? If you have any such year value which cannot be accommodated by snowflake date and timestamp data type, it has to be stored as a string or a text and should be processed during query execution time. And that's how we will try to solve this problem. Another problem statement, how will you optimize your Snowflake data warehouse cost while loading large data set which has timestamp with nanosecond heavy columns? Or does it really matter at all? With our simulation of 2.5 million rows which had one timestamp column, we did not see any big difference in the performance. Maybe if we are loading billions of record and there are a lot of timestamp which supports nanosecond precision, there could be some difference. As Snowflake suggests, try those use cases. According to your result, you try to optimize. Don't optimize at the first go. Before we proceed further, I would like to share something with you. Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse is the future. It is such a powerful platform with great features that it will eventually replace many legacy data platforms. I have been adding simple and real life scenario based videos and playlist so we all can learn together. You don't need to buy any expensive courses. All my contents are freely available in this channel. My channel audience really enjoys them. And yes, your success and your feedback really matters to me. So don't hesitate to share your feedback and your comment. We have seen and learned a lot in this playlist. What we haven't seen so far Data loading best practices, do's and don'ts, especially when it comes to CSV data files and many more interesting topics. They all are covered in other video available in this playlist. So continue to follow this channel. And if you think this channel content is helping you by any means, do me a favor by subscribing to this channel. Thank you for listening so patiently. Keep learning and keep growing.